So let's get to more precise definition of anemia. So do you know the numbers? Anemia. So what are the numbers? For men, what are the limits to like normal hemoglobin? It's 135 till 175. And it changes with different, let's say, associations, okay? Like hematological, but yeah, if you remember this, about 135, that's the limit. Then that's for men. What is it for women? What is it? Would be like 12, like 120, sorry, if it's 12, if it's this Yeah, for women, exactly. Yeah, this is in Europe, we put it on liters, yeah, but in the US, you put it on deciliters, so you have to divide it by 10, very good. So it's 120 till 160 grams per liter. And actually, what I said already, yeah, basically, you can use hematocrit as well. But don't forget, with hematocrit, you have to think of... What? You have to think of, well, with this one as well, but yeah, also hydration can change it a lot. So you expect that the patient is normally hydrated, okay? Yeah. But with the hematocrit, you can just multiply it by 0.3. And if we talk about the lowest uh, number, then this this is like 41% of hematocrit and 36 in women, okay? So this is the normal range or normal hematocrit, or the limit for the hematocrit. But how is it with the signs Well, and symptoms? Well, of course, if you're young and it decreases to 110, uh, may you won't even know it, okay? And you can also remember that every time a woman is pregnant, she gets anemic naturally, okay? So there's also increased ADH secretion. So by this and also let's say the fetus uh, eats lots of her iron because fetus needs iron so basically all women are like deprivated by iron because they're not able to resorb as much as they consume because of the fetus so remember every woman is getting anemic and and iron depleted a bit during pregnancy okay but anyway so so if the let's say Already, the anemia that really counts in younger patients, in all the other patients, 105 could be already like severe anemia with many signs that we're going to mention now. But with the younger ones, it's still okay. And let's say 80 to 100, already with this one, you're going to be tired. You're going to be tired and dizzy, okay? So tired, tiredness, dizziness. And then if it falls even more, 60 to 80, yeah, you can be really dyspneic. You can have a syncope. And of course, am I? Okay. But it's always, again, the same principle as we talk always about. And it's if you're getting anemia slower, very, like, very slow, you're able to compensate uh, more severe anemia, okay? it always works like this so the slower it goes the deeper you can go with hemoglobin and still be sort of okay okay good so anemia crucial thing you look for hemoglobin amount of erythrocyte if you want hematocrit with erythrocyte still there's one more thing crucial that you use there are more things but very crucial one and this one actually is about the production. It tells you very directly in almost of the cases how it is with production. If the production is increased, it means that the bone marrow is okay. It's working well and it responds well to hypoxia, for example. Well, okay, and what is the thing? Those are reticulocytes. So in reticulocytes, you look at them as 
like freshmen, like, like a very young erythrocytes, which still have some remnants from the nucleus in them, but they're already released from the bone marrow into the blood. A normal amount should be about 2%. So if you have around 2% of reticulocytes, that's, that's the way, that's the normal way. Well, but guess what? In case the bone marrow now gets a command, hey, produce as much as uh, new erythrocytes as you can do. So the production has to increase. Well, naturally the reticulocytes will be increased. So when the reticulocytes are are more than 2% in the blood, you should expect that there is increased production. And when this Can happens... I ask, yeah? May I ask you something? Yes. Uh, is there any formula to calculate whether the reticulocytes are more than 2% or not? Because, look, if we have anemia, we have less amounts of red blood cells. So... Like yeah, yeah, but we but will but have in, more reticulocytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's you look, you look, you look for the percentage that you see on on uh, on on a volume. Okay. No, but uh, what I mean is that, like, let's say before anemia, we had like two. Uh, I don't know two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're losing bleeding. still the same amount of uh, reticulocytes when you're bleeding, for example. You know. Oh, okay, fine. So, and it's so always, it's you know, I, but, but there's also, yeah, it's, it doesn't work like as fast, of course. Okay. So you have to, with the okay. production, you have to also wait two, three days, for example. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so there's a delay in the production. It's not like immediate, like as we talked with the heart and lungs, that's immediate. This takes time. But remember, if there is going to be increased percentage of reticulocytes, in most of the cases, it really helps you to say there's increased production and the, let's say the production is fine. And what is going to happen exactly? This is going to happen when? When you're losing erythrocytes. So when you're bleeding or you have hemolysis, you're going to check and the reticulocyte, the percentage should be increased, boosted up later. In two or three days after you bled, okay, or there was a hemolytic attack, then the bone marrow should be boosted. Everything works fine and the reticulocyte percentage should increase. Okay, so this is in case of hemolysis, for example. Okay. On the other hand, when there is something with production, the reticulocytes will be decreased. And either it's going to be you don't have enough of substrate to produce it, or the problem is within the bone marrow itself, or there's decreased EPO, okay? So when the production is decreased, the amount of reticulocytes it's decreased. So it's less than two percent. Okay, and that that this means increased production. This means decreased production. Whatever the causes. Good. So first, you're going to measure hemoglobin. It's under 120, 110. You can say, hey, it's anemia. And now you look at uh, how much reticulocytes you have, and you can sort of guess, but it doesn't have to be like immediate after the hemolysis, but in five days, four days, if the reticulocytes are already higher, you can basically tell, oh, okay, so the production is okay, it's going to be rather hemolysis. Or you can say, oh, reticulocytes are decreased. Oh, maybe the cost could be something with the bone marrow, or there's not enough of substrate or something. Okay, yeah. So there's something with production. Well, and basically, increased production, decrease, that's the part of physiological division. And now we have another thing that you're going to check in the blood. And it's the mean corpuscular volume. And this division, this is the morphological classification of the anemia. And remember, you use combination of these two to find out the cause. So you're trying to use these two classifications together... So you look on the production and what could be the problems, and then you look at, on the size of the erythrocytes, and you already sort of could guess very well. And sometimes you can guess it directly in combination with anamnesis, of course, patient's history. But again, you always get the MCV as well. So 
let's say on the basis of NCV and the amount of reticulocytes, you can already, you know, divide the anemias into smaller subfolders. And then with the diagnosis, you go deeper within the subfolder to rule out or to find out the exact cause. Okay. Yeah. And so we're getting to morphological division of the anemias. Okay. So let's say morphological division. And this is the one you use in hospitals because you get directly the MCV and you already can tell. And you care only about basically, you know, it's anemia. And now you look how big are the erythrocytes and it tells you a lot. So MCV, crucial thing. And what you can have, well, you're going to check the blood and there is normal size. What is the MCV, by the way? What's the normal size? It should be between 80 to 100 femtoliters, okay? So this is a normal size of the erythrocyte. And we don't care about shape now. And basically what I want to say is now we're going to do the different sizes, but just sizes. But doing that, I'm going to tell you more diagnostic tests, which will also make you certain it's rather this than that, okay? So we're going to go through it in this section. So... Mean corpuscular volume crucial and normally sites, so you call it normocytic, okay, normocytic anemia. And I, I won't go deeper into this so much, but what would be the normocytic anemia when this happens? What do you think? Aplastic uh, bone marrow or bleeding. Okay, so, uh, so, anemia? I'm sorry? Sickle cell anemia. Okay, okay. But but you are already like mentioning a special types, okay? But oh. the bleeding was a good idea in general or hemolysis because look at that. If it's like now acute, I have some crisis, hemolytic crisis, or I'm bleeding somewhere and I was healthy before that. Naturally, if you take my blood next day or, or the same day, I'm going to have just less erythrocytes, but their production was fine, so they should look totally normal. There's going to be just decreased level of them. And of course, then there are some other special diseases like cycle cell anemia, or let's say other corpuscular diseases. That means that there's a problem within the erythrocyte, and it's malproduced, but sort of still the, the size stays the same, okay? So with the MCV, with the MCV, you cannot say, it just describes the size. So you want to know if it's cycle cell anemia or G6PD deficiency or whatever. Okay, you want to know that. It tells you just the size. You would have to look on a blood smear and see a special shape, for example, of the area. And, and that's what we're going to talk about later. But now just look at the volume, okay? So, yeah, typically, yeah, it could be hemolysis, bleeding, or decreased production. But that has nothing to do. It's because the bone marrow is just depressed somehow, as in aplastic anemia. That was very right. Or if you have decreased EPO, you have decreased EPO. So normally, the size is going to be normal. It's going to be normal cystic anemia, okay? If there is not anything else lacking. So basically over here, you can put either decreased production, okay, or increased distraction or loss, okay? And over here, you could have the EPO decreased or aplastic anemia and many other. We're going to talk about them a bit later. And then, of course, over here, you're going to have hemolysis. So hemolysis or bleeding. But basically over here, this is where the reticulocytes are very important. Because with this one, you're going to have decreased reticulocytes. And with this one's increased after a few days. Because the bone marrow over here is okay. And it's going to try to react to the loss. Okay. Over here, the decrease is the cause. Either it's not stimulated or it's broken somehow. It's not working as it should be in production. Okay, good. And then you have, then you check the MCV and the size is smaller. 
So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.